I tell these guys all the time, I want to pull up to that jail. And I want to have somebody tell me, in hey, court, go home. All the lights are off. Nobody's here anymore. Go home. That'll make me happy. Yeah. I don't care. Boom, boom. So what? Okay, cool. Goodbye. Turn around and leave. That probably never happened. But if it did, it would be beautiful. Yeah, it would. There's no more inmates. No, nobody's coming to jail anymore. Oh, cool. I did my job. Let me turn right around go home. You're listening to 56, a Pinellas County Sheriff's Office podcast. I'm Ricky Butler, once again joined by my amusing, trustworthy, excellent <laughs> colleagues and co-hosts, Laura Sullivan and Ashley Cooley. We are thrilled to be bringing you episode three. And I think we need to thank everybody for listening to episode two, because according to Brennan, I mean, we were, we were off the charts early on there yeah. with that. Yeah. I, think we, I think Mike can take credit for that, maybe. But I'm hoping that it's just people kind of excited about it because I like the first episode. I think it was Eddie. Eddie? Yeah. He used a picture the, of Eddie. Yeah, I did to promote it. And yeah, I yeah. mean, the dog always steals the dogs. show. Dogs. dogs and kids. Dogs. No, no actor wants to work so, with them. So sorry, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't Mike. It was, it was I Eddie. mean, he's not getting any text and, messages about tennis. No, so. and Eddie didn't <laughs> even have a speaking part and he still blew Mike out of the yep. water. So, all right. So we appreciate it. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback on it. We actually got some fan mail. Nothing that we can start, you know, moving forward with yet, but we're going to get there eventually. I know we will. People apparently know about our email address now. They do, which less, is? Less56 at pcsonet.com. I don't know. It's your is line. That, wow. it? It's your line. <laughs> you I forgot it. it. Is that it? It is. L-E-T-S-5-6 at pcsonet.com. There it there is. There you there go. Is. Welcome back, I Laura. I felt more we're, rehearsed. We're glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that are listening for the first time, uh, this is your first time ever tuning into 56. I'm going to say this one more time. And then after this, you're going to have to go back. If you're listening, you're going to have to go back and listen to episode zero because we give you all the context. But if you're wondering what's the deal with 56 because you're a first time listener, here it is. Ready? So law enforcement speaks in code, as most know. Uh, there are two particular types of code that we utilize on the radio. One is what's called a signal code, and the other, which folks are most familiar with, is the 10 code. That's like 10-4 uh, or 1020, which means location. What's your 20? Uh, so they vary agency to agency, but when you get up to the higher numbers of the 10 codes, they vary. But here at the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, 1056 means meet or meet up, and that's exactly what we do with this podcast. We meet members of the agency, talk about who they are, what they do, and hopefully have a lot of fun along the way. So that is your explanation, the last time you'll ever get it, and everybody's on their own now if they tune in. Uh, but so back to the first couple episodes, um, both related to components and individuals of the Sheriff's Office that are on the law enforcement side of what we do, which is actually the smallest part of what we do when all things are considered because the biggest part uh, of the sheriff's office operation literally and figuratively is running the jail. Mm -hmm. So people affiliate uh, sheriff's offices with, you know, green and whites out on the road, what they might read in the news about investigations, arrests, things of that nature. But over a third of all of our 2,800 employees work out at the Pinellas County Jail, and all those resources go out there um, to support that. So I am uh, really excited to welcome our 2022 Detention Deputy of the Year, Deputy Anthony LaCourt, on to 56, um, to talk about all sorts of good stuff. And before we get into that, uh, I do want to give you all some context about the jail, because it is a, it's the biggest, like I said, but lesser known part of what we do. So uh, I already mentioned, you know, Majority of our uh, personnel in one place uh, is is all um, in the Department of Detention and Corrections, which is the jail. Uh, those are all either correction certified deputies, so law enforcement and corrections is is two different certifications in the state of Florida, and then of course civilian support staff that make up uh, that that big chunk of, of folks out there. Um, we have uh, the jail here is organized as a department, so. We, if, if you've been a part of any of our public education programs, particularly the Sheriff Citizens Academy, you know, there's always kind of the, the running gag is that, you know, people will say coming in not knowing they'll call us the Sheriff's Department. It's like, nope. Ricky just, jumps on them I jump right on away. Them. That's, if mm -hmm. people are going to take one thing away from us, it's the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office and it's Sheriff's Office across the state of Florida because it's an independent constitutional office. Of course, other parts of this, the country have Sheriff's Departments, but in Florida, it's Sheriff's Office. Because the word department implies that it's part of something larger, which in this case, the Department of Detention and Corrections, or DDC, is, and it is part of the Sheriff's Office. So it is also commanded by a colonel, which we only have one, 
uh, at the sheriff's office in our rank structure. So uh, we have a colonel that runs the jail who reports to the chief deputy. So some stats for you guys, just again, for context, these are all 2022 stats. So from last year, um, our average daily population is around 2,800 inmates uh, throughout the jail. Uh, and we have about 33,000 bookings per year. So notice I said bookings not people, because for some reason people could come back and perhaps um, Anthony can explain why that is. I think I think Anthony's just such a nice guy. That, yeah, uh, they just like to see him. They can't get enough of <laughs> That's it. has got to be the issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the average length of stay at the jail is, is 32 days uh, last year. So people you know, may not know the difference between jail and prison, uh, but jail uh, is if you're sentenced to a year or less, you do your time at the county jail. A year and a day, you go, as we say, up the road to the Florida Department of Corrections to do that time. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have people that have been in the jail for years because they may be awaiting trial because pretty much everybody in the jail, is a, unless they're serving a sentence, everyone else is a pretrial detainee uh, that's there. So, yeah, that's kind of some big picture context. So that's information not everybody has. Context is important as we as we move through this, but... Welcome, Deputy LaCourt. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. We're going to start with Ashley's icebreaker question. All right. This is the scariest part of the whole thing. <laughs> well, it because is not. Ashley's the only person that knows the question. Correct. But and we all hate not having information. We right. all hate ha- knowing that there's something out there that we cannot know. It's yeah. very frustrating. We always fall on the we're, sword, we're though, because we don't want him to feel left out, mm-hmm. that he's the only mm-hmm. one being put on the spot. So, Ashley, take it away. Yeah. All right. And also, my question is usually not law enforcement related. Um, it was for the first one, um, but it's something maybe that's going on in pop culture or just something I find interesting and kind of levels the playing field that no one's really an expert really on what, okay. I'm, what I'm going to bring up. Or so you think. Uh, correct. You don't know. Correct. But that would be a fun thing to discover. All right. So, okay. So at the time that this podcast is being recorded, Taylor Swift was just here oh, over the weekend. Oh, here we go. <laughs> he could be um, a Swifty. You'd never know. I wouldn't. Uh, but, okay, so people paid, you know, I know you lucked out and didn't have to pay thousands of dollars, mm-hmm. but plenty of people did. And I want to know, regardless of time period, um, who would you pay a lot of money to see in concert? Mm. Everyone's looking at me because I always answer you first. You always yeah, answer first. You, you, don't you, do you don't have to. Well, yeah, whoever wants to jump in. I mean, in. if you know. if you The if, Rat Pack. The Rat Pack. The Rat, oh. Rat Pack in Las Vegas in a small venue. Okay. All right. I like it. Uh, I'm going to be Led Zeppelin all day. Same. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, like, uh, I'll, I'll fly across. I'll go to, <laughs> I don't like airplane rides, long ones, but I would go to wherever I have to go, Antarctica, Australia. What else like, is far away? In their heyday. I mean, I'd see them right now. I would too, I but would. I would if I if like time wasn't a yeah. thing. I don't think they'd be the same in now as they would yeah. be in the early seventies. Yeah. I mean, of course not, but I'll take whatever I can get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, but well, I was just telling all, you, like it's, right. it's open. Yeah, you can right. choose. Like the, they're all pretty much still alive, except John Bonham. So, or yeah, I, I get him and his son confused all the time. So you know, I take it now, uh, but. Back in the day, would be and we have to remember that I mean, the biggest concert ever at the time was when they were here in Tampa. I didn't hmm. know that. I forget what year that was, but yeah. I didn't fun know. facts. You oh. learned mm-hmm. something. But yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. exactly Instant my answer. answer. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go with uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, and, okay. And if, if, if I pay extra, can I like sing a torch song with her at the end? Of course. Okay. I mean, this okay. is all hypothetical. Yeah, then so I'm what, do that. whatever your dream that, is. I think that extra money might have to and go for refunds for the other <gasps> concert. <gasps> I don't know. So, I don't know. Oh, I haven't heard you sing. I, so. I, I only sing when you guys aren't in the office. I get in at 7.30 and uh, I, I turn on the radio. And, or, and just yeah. jam out. Yep. All right. Yep. Got a half gonna, an hour before anybody else comes I in. I got to sneak in early one morning yeah. just to see see what mm-hmm. that what that's like. We have cameras and stuff. so you know. We do. Oh, yeah. Just plant them. Sh- you can probably sh- already have a whole sh- compilation. We need to get that. Can we turn, Brennan, can we turn one of these fancy cameras into like a nanny cam or something and have it in the office early recording? Yeah. Oh. All right. I shouldn't give away all of our. No, no. our secrets. I'll forget I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ashley, you're just going to say that's what, you know, what he, what's your second one then since I stole yours? My second one? Yeah. Probably the Eagles. All right. They were just here. I mean, minus. Well, I mean. Glenn Fry. I didn't go. I saw them with Jimmy Buffett. But I mean, back in the day. Back in the day, for sure. Back in the day. I saw them with Jimmy Buffett a couple years ago. And that was interesting. Hmm. At uh, Camping World Stadium, I think. I've never actually been to a real concert. Really? Yeah, a couple of small 
venue things. What is like a small? Ani, Ani DeFranco, like like I don't know, a couple hundred people in a small like really college town place. She's I've a never, Buffalonian. I've never never been to her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've never been to a concert? Not not a big one. No, you I'm did. scared. I'm scared of crowds. Okay, not scared. Mm. Uh, dis dislike and loud noises. So that's I'm not, on that. That's I not am. the right place for you. No. Have you ever been caught in a crowd and you you're the only person not moving and everybody else is moving, so you have to move and you have to go that way? No. I've had that at a concert. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. it's terrible. See, that oh. sounds, that sounds no. scary. Now, the that's last terrifying. concert I was at was terrible. It was one of those lawn mm. concerts, like, down mm. at the Vinoy. Mm. And the guy next to me, oh, he, he was on one. And his hair was sweaty, <laughs> and he was whipping it, and it <laughs> oh, kept hitting me. Oh, no. And my wow. friend right next to me, she is having the time of her life. She's like, ah, like just enjoying yeah. it. And me, I'm in my hell. Yeah. Like, this just like, sitting this there. This is the worst thing ever. Yeah. And that was exactly, we're walking back to the car. She was like, that was amazing. Wasn't amazing. I was like, that was the worst night of my life. I have man hair sweat all over Oof. me. Oof. Yeah. We, we were actually, we were talking about music festivals at lunch today. Where it's like oh, yeah. how it's just not, not my jam because of that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So. It was terrible. I have to say, going to Taylor Swift, uh, we, we did have floor seats. I actually was avoided the Armageddon of when Ticketmaster first released tickets. And I got some very inexpensive floor seats because she really wasn't, you know, trying to make that much. It was Ticketmaster that messed it up. But anyway... I don't enjoy sitting on the floor uh, because you're packed in with people and mm -hmm. just, uh, that's not my thing. I, I mm -mm. prefer to sit, you know, up higher and whatever, but I wanted to stay married. So I went. Well, that's how it goes. You of know. course. Yeah. Naturally. All right. Well, good stuff. That was a good question. Sorry I stole your answer, but I'm glad we're on the same page there. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> now I know. All right. So Deputy Anthony LaCourt, uh, been with us. A little over four years, is that right? A little over four years, four, years. four and a half years. All right. And you had you came from New York with a prior corrections experience. So. Prior experience. So you came, how long ago did you come to Florida? Well, hold on. You grew up in New York then? Correct. Okay. Western New York. Okay. And then you, um, how did you, like, how did Florida end up on your radar? Um, I've been coming down here since I was about 13 years old. My grandfather lived down here. Um, and I used to fly down and then drive back with him, um, spend time with him. And um, as I got older... Always, I fell in love with this area. Um, it's easy to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not gray. It's not yeah. cloudy. Mm -hmm. It's not snow. It's not cold. Mm -hmm. And you came down to this this part of Florida or? Clearwater, yeah. Okay, cool. So then that, it was on the radar. So you moved on from New York um, and? I came down with uh, my girlfriend who I later married, mm -hmm. um, who's now my wife. And um, just started my career all over. Mm -hmm. Uh, life choices, everything else. Mm -hmm. um, started out the uh, uh, Florida DOC, and then uh, went from there to Pinellas. I actually, once I got my certifications back, I just went all over Sarasota, Polk, Pinellas, all over, just to try A little to bit everything. Uh, absolutely. I hit them all. So how long have you been in Florida? About seven years. Okay. I think you said that already, but I missed yeah. it. All right, so... Um, Obviously, you know, the Department of Corrections in Florida is is always kind of a hot topic, you know, uh -huh. across the board. But, you know, what what before we I just want to move, talk about it and then we can move on from the Florida Department of Corrections. But what is the contrast there? Night, and, contrast. night and day. Yeah. Night and day. Um, I think they need a revamping, a rehauling. Um, there's a lot of things that they don't have that they should have. Uh, leadership being one of them. Um, it's a big thing. Yeah. It's been, I mean, it's been a point of discussion. Retention. Like, yeah. you know, they have a very, very hard time retaining people. Mm -hmm. Why? Hmm. Leadership. Yeah. That's always, always a clue. Um, so was that kind of, you just, that was the easiest thing for you at the time? Just to, you, they called back first? Like, how did you? How well, did you what had happened was I was working at St. Joe's uh, Hospital, um, doing security and we had um st joe's in tampa correct okay and i then went to st joe's in riverview and we had uh hillsborough uh deputies coming and dropping off b-52s baker axe and everything else and um i had had a few discussions with a couple deputies and they're like what are you doing here and you know hillsborough's got a academy going in about seven eight months you know so i didn't want to wait the eight months so i got a phone call uh, to go out and have an interview uh, out at Hardy. Mm -hmm. And um, they said, I'll call you in a week or two. I pulled out the gate, went down the road, and phone rang. <laughs> Can you come in tomorrow? 
can you start tomorrow? <laughs> and it was that quick. Wow. Yeah. A couple questions. I sat there for like a 20 minute interview and, and gone. So either you either killed the interview or they were really desperate. I think they were really desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, I think they were really desperate. So are they on, because uh, I'm just not familiar with it. I mean, uh, are, what kind of shifts are they on for DOC? Same. Same. They went from 8s to 12s. Okay. Um, it, don't get me wrong. It, it, you know, it is for some people and it's not for some people. Sure. Yeah. So let's fast forward now. So you're, you're here in Pinellas. Mm -hmm. uh, you are... Have you spent your entire career here working in healthcare? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's where I choose to be. Yeah. So okay, can, can, we, can we back up a second? Why? Yeah. Why? Why did you choose Pinellas County Sheriff's Office as opposed to other? Through the counties. interviews and everything else, yeah. and the people. Um, to me, it felt like family. Hmm. It mm -hmm. felt like a close uh, that they cared about me. They wanted me. Instead of you know, putting it out there, listen, we're having a hiring uh, event, this and that. Mm -hmm. No, they called, they wanted me. And it, it, it felt good to be wanted. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Hmm. And you could tell that just even in the interview stage. Yes. You could, you could tell like yes. sort of the culture here. Wonderful yeah. people. Hmm. And it, to me, at my age at that time, it meant a lot. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, the, the, the human side of things, that's, that's what we all want. That's what anybody yeah. wants, no matter where you're going to work, is just to Correct. Kind of see that. And, and it's pretty evident when, you know, and we all may be a little biased, uh, but, yeah, I think, I think we, we genuinely care about uh, Absolutely. the folks we work with here. So that's, I'm glad that, that translates to somebody coming in from, from, from elsewhere. So yeah. uh, you work in healthcare. So, again, kind of a, a context break here. Mm -hmm. So um, the uh, people don't realize, again, people that come to jail are not, typically in tip-top shape health-wise. And because we're responsible for that care, custody, and control of inmates, that includes their health, their health well-being. Mm -hmm. So we do have uh, extensive medical facilities. We have a 432-bed medical facility, which is uh, part of North Division, which is where, um, where Anthony works. So that's a thing that, I mean, the things we do there are insane. People don't realize, you know, we, we try to do as much as we possibly can in-house uh, medically, so we're not having to send folks out because when we do that, it obviously gets costly. We're providing prescription medications. There's a whole lot to it. And, of course, um, a different clientele uh, working in healthcare. So uh, you've been there the entire time. You did not work anywhere else. You just came straight into healthcare. Or well, when I start? first was on FTO, I worked every, sure. everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I chose to stay in healthcare because of the people that I work with. Mm -hmm. And um, I like it. Mm -hmm. I really do. I like it. So I want to talk about all that and, and, and what it's like working in healthcare and what you do there. But just kind of generally, and you may have to draw back on just prior experience as well, but, you know, what kind of mindset do you have to have or, or what kind of mindset do you think is ideal to work in that kind of environment, just in, inside a jail or, or prison in general? you got to be able to put up with... 70 to 80 different personalities, uh, 30 or 40 different issues a night. Um, you've got people coming in, they're, they're going through dope sickness. Uh, this fentanyl is a crazy thing. Mm -hmm. It is just decimating young people and old people too. I've got 60, 70 year old people that are going through dope sickness and fentanyl. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to recognize uh, issues with people, whether it's uh, schizophrenia, any kind of mental issue, you have to be able to recognize that and be able to stay on top of it because if you don't, it could be an issue. Um, I try to familiarize myself with each and every inmate that I deal with each night. Hey, how you doing? Uh, how's things? Hey, how did you go? How was court the other day? You know, how did you, how'd you make out? Um, and that allows them, you see somebody sitting quietly the majority of the night, I'm going to go up and I'm going to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And that's my way of getting them to know that, hey, listen, I see you. I know all about you. I'm here to help you. If you need something, come talk to me. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times, especially people that are first time here, it's, they have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock bedtime, can't use the phone. Uh, you eat at 3 o'clock in the morning for breakfast. Mm -hmm. They have no idea. They're terrified. Mm -hmm. And if the mental illness is there or, or drug addiction or anything else, that just complicates the matter 10 times. Right. And they're going to look for somebody. Uh, they're going to look for a way to um, get their emotions out or be able to speak to somebody about something. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing to, to be able to, you know, hey, come here, come on, come visit me, come talk with me, right? walk with me. 
So it was interesting. Uh, last episode, we were talking with Sergeant Killian, and, yeah. and he started his career uh, at the Pasco County Jail and mm-hmm. because he applied. He wanted to, to be a road deputy, and, and they're like, no, you're too young. You need to, you need to learn how to talk to people. Yeah. So h- how did that go for you? I mean, stepping in to, to that role, I, I, when, when did you start in corrections? What was it? Well, let's go back to how we're going to talk to people. Mm-hmm. My father was, my, he had this amazing ability to talk to somebody he hadn't seen in 30 years and remember things about them from the ability to talk to somebody is it's got two things going for you if i remember something about you you're going to say that you took the time to remember something about me okay you also have the ability to de-escalate any kind of situation Mm. through communication Um, And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right. Um, But you make that attempt. The ability, you can talk to anybody. You have to be able to assimilate to everybody. Talk to everybody. Um, Ever since I've been back home, Mm -hmm. same thing. I would sit down and talk to somebody. Um, Interaction with people. People want to talk. People are not solitary individuals. They need to talk. Right. They need to have some sort of association. So what you're saying is it always came very naturally for you then. Yeah, and it doesn't, and, you know, I was telling you, we, we, I would go to the grocery store with my, my dad, and he'd talk to somebody, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> there, there goes a five-minute trip into a half-an-hour thing. That's right. I'll, right. Be with yeah. you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. Relax. I'll be with you. Right. But it's something that, you know, that not everybody has. You have to be mm-hmm. able to talk to uh, every ethnicity, every racial group. You have to be able to talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. And show some compassion towards that person. Ninety-nine percent of the time, these people are at their lowest. Sure. And they have no idea why they're there. They're looking for somebody to blame. And it's not me they blame. It's the uniform. Sure. It's what we represent. Mm -hmm. They're blaming us. Mm -hmm. You have to dissuade them from blaming us. Right. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're an extrovert then? Would you say like you're kind of like fueled by talking to people and learning about them and stuff? I talk in my sleep. Yeah. I wonder if, like, overall, like, a lot of um, <laughs> detention uh, deputies, like, if that's, like, a common trait. I wonder, to have that people You skill. have to have that skill. Yeah. It's extremely important to have that skill. Um, <laughs> when you don't have that skill, things yeah. go wrong. Yeah. That's all, I'm an introvert, and I feel like that would just be, like, no no, no way I could do it. Because I just... <laughs> Maybe also it's just that you have to find people interesting, whether you're an introvert or extrovert, just to be always interested in, in their stories and whatever they're going through. Correct. I mean, there's something, uh, you know, I tell the inmates all the time, talk to this man at night. Talk to him. I don't, I don't care if you talk. Keep the noise down, but talk to him. Tell him something he might not know about you, history, something, anything, something about your, your life. I want to know. And that's why I talk to these guys all the time. Mm-hmm. And they'll look at you like, well, why am I so important? Because I want to know about you. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times if there's an issue, if I see somebody stressed out, hey, man, what's your favorite baseball team? Where are you from? Oh, I'm from New England. You like the Patriots? Because I'm a Bills fan. I don't like the Patriots. Mm-hmm. What do you want to talk about? And it breaks them down. Yeah. And for a couple of minutes, they feel valued. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because jail, I imagine, can be a very dehumanizing experience. Every bird, everybody, yeah. uh, I mentioned the Catholic school last time we talked, yeah, yeah. and it's like Catholic school. <laughs> everybody, everybody wears the same uniform. Right. Everybody eats the same food. Right. Everybody looks the same. Hmm. Um, you're going to do what you're told to do. Um, you're going to eat at a certain time. You're, you know, you're allowed to shower between these times. You're allowed to use the phone at this time. But you're going you're gonna to do what you're told to do. And it's yeah. a lot of people, they're not used to that. Right. They're not used to having, you know, be able to pick up their phone, walk out the door, get on the computer. Um, hey, deputy, can you look this up? No, sir, I can't. You know, bind yourself out or when you're released, do what you got to do, but you can't do it here. Right. It's just, it's so fascinating to me because I've spent a fair amount of time uh, in the jail for various programs and things we do and, and taking too many tours of the jail like to count, you know, <laughs> but you're, you're walking through these areas. It's like, oh, this is this, this is that, you know, but you know, there's tons of activity going on. You know, there's a story, you know, everybody's got a story, you know, deputies you're seeing, uh, you know, doing their checks or whatever it is, they're, they're they're engaging with these inmates. They know exactly what's going on with, mm-hmm. with everyone all the time. And I think that's 
such a valuable skill set, just as you're saying. I mean, and it goes back to, you know, Sergeant Killian saying he had to start there and it made him a better deputy. But that's still a, a, a superior skill to pretty much anything else that's out there. Because like you said, I mean, if you can talk to somebody, you can de-escalate a situation, you can kind of break down those barriers that people just naturally have because of the uniform or because of whatever, you know, whatever they got going on. Yeah. So talk to us about uh, health care then. So what does that look like for you? That is 12 hours of what can go wrong, <laughs> what's going to go right, um, where am I going to be? Uh, healthcare to me is you have to want to be there. Mm. Consistently, every bid, you see the same people. Very rarely do you get anybody new mm. because they want to be there, because they have that special skill to communicate with people. Mm. I think everybody I'm the three squads, I think everybody has the ability to communicate with people and they're great to work with. Right. So what does a, what does a normal day look like? Talk us through just your shift, what you do. Um, come in seven o'clock, relieve the previous shift, usually about 20 to seven, quarter to seven. Mm -hmm. And then um, sit down, get my computer straightened out, get my entries in gyms, get everything set up. I try to do the inmate mail and everything else before Okay, so hold on. What's GEMS? Yeah. Uh, jail, inmate, uh, jail inmate management system. Okay. Um, that is everything that you need mm -hmm. uh, between releases, um, people coming in, medical appointments, everything else. Everything is right there. Your log is right there. Everything is right there. Is that there. kind of how you get up to speed on whatever happened with the prior shift? Anything you need to know? Or is no. that a conversation? Well, that's usually a conversation with whoever I'm or leaving. You know, okay. let's pass it down. Mm -hmm. Pass down the information. Jim's is basically who's in your pod. Um, it lists their past previous crimes, or what they're uh, charged, charged with. with. Charged with Correct. Um, disciplinary actions, everything else like that, contact logs, uh, their scheduling, okay. um, plus your, your general log also. And then I get up and I do a little speech on both sides. And um, usually everybody that's there knows a speech. But I make sure I get their attention because I'm not going to go over it again. Mm -hmm. Do it one time. Mm -hmm. That's it. Get it done. Uh, and this is what we have today, gentlemen. We might have um, bedrolls. We might have uniforms. We might have shaving. We might have this. Uh, depending upon medical uh, coming in, everything else, um, we'll do this, we'll do that. And then generally let them go through their day. Let them come up with their questions, anything that they really need, put it on the kiosk and let them uh, go from there. But do, do, do they listen to you? What if they don't, don't listen to you when you're, when you're giving your, your welcome speech? I stop that and night? I go to the other side. And I'll, I'll come back and I'll see it. It's all about command presence. It's all mm -hmm. about them respecting you. I'll stand there. And if I have to sit on a table, I'll sit on a table and I will wait for them to all 30, 40 men on one side to it's, be quiet. It's just you and 30 or 40 That's people? It. On one side. The other side is 30 or 40 people also. Oh, all, all yours. Right. The, wow. the most you probably have is like 65, anywhere from that. Um, Alone. Yeah. Like you. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. But this is where your experience, your command presence, yeah. and your ability to communicate with these people, mm -hmm. uh, these inmates, Keeps you going, and it and it garners respect towards you, because I'll sit on that table and I'll I'll wait for him to be quiet, mm -hmm. and then uh, okay, gentlemen, we're ready to start. Welcome to a brand new day, and I go into my speech, and um, I complete it. I ask if there's any questions, and then I go over to the other side and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can't talk over them because that's just going to be a, a battle, I don't, a battle I, of volume. No, I don't yeah. do it. I don't do it because then that shows that I'm allowing them to have some sort of control over. Right. Me and the unit. Mm. It's not going to happen. I'm going to go back. <laughs> I'll be back, gentlemen. But I usually go to the other side. I don't have that issue. Um, and if I do have the issue, I'll, I'll find out where the issue is, tell the gentleman, come on over here, let's visit for a little bit. Let's sit and talk. Sir, when I'm up there mm -hmm. trying to you know, give out pod directions, I need you to pay attention because I'm not going to repeat myself, and I don't want you to make the same mistakes you're making. So, yeah. um, And then let them go through the day. Med pass, you know, everything else. So a couple of things just for context and to understand. So there are obviously different types of housing areas throughout the jail. Correct. Uh, you're describing, uh, because like in, in Central Division, I believe it is, is where you'll have like the 80-person, you know, pod dormitory style. Right. So this is similar, yeah, but it's, it's, in, it's medical. So what, what 
puts an inmate uh, in your area versus uh, obviously some sort of medical issue, but like yeah. what degree of it puts Correct. them in your it, pocket? It could have been an injury, uh, you know, uh, oh, that happened before right. booking or um, they might have had a fight somewhere else, uh, alter some sort of physical altercation somewhere else in the in the uh, the jail, um, mental, mm -hmm. um, drugs, uh, a lot of things, and you're going to get all that protect semi protective custody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's you're you're getting a tremendous amount. You're getting like five or six different areas mm -hmm. that are all mixed together. Right. So obviously, anywhere in the jail, if you're on. X type of medication, you get your medication. You don't have to be in the healthcare area, correct? N correct. Yeah, okay. everybody, everybody has medication. Sure. Yeah, but but you know, so the folks that you have are are people that need a little bit more intensive atti att attention from the medical staff. Correct. Okay. Which are right there in that building. Correct. Like they're the closest to that kind yes. of care. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so, then, sorry, Laura. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so some of them are there short term because they have like one acute injury, or there's some that are there long term because they have. Ongoing, correct. Needs. Like, uh, yeah, like on the fourth floor, you might have yeah. um, some units are. Um, it's oh, like a waiting room. It's mm. older uh, inmates. Uh, they're waiting to go through trial um, okay. and uh, it's hospital beds and you know stuff like yeah. that. Uh, so, in in normal in the in jail in general, right? So where people are housed is is part of a, a whole behavioral modification system. Correct. Uh, so if you are, so like say if you belong in, in maximum security, that's where you normally would have some sort of medical thing. They're not going to be where, where in your, in yeah. your pot. They, they could be. They could be. Okay. That's all up to classification. Correct. Right. Correct. Which we, can you explain classification a little bit for our listeners? Um, when, when somebody comes in uh, through the booking process, classification, uh, depend, depending upon if they've been there previously uh, they could be on a red dot status. They could be on some sort of status that is going to automatically send them over to um, healthcare units, uh, third floor, second floor, fourth floor. Red, red dot is? Yeah. Red dot is, is aggressive, very aggressive. Okay. Um, oh. They might go to the second floor, um, and it could be anything. Uh, you could get somebody with psych issues or somebody going through a detox. Uh, they'll be in our, in our areas uh, okay. when they come through. But usually... Um, they do a fantastic job classification and identifying. Uh, well, the nursing staff assists with that also, mm -hmm. and they do a fantastic job in identifying uh, where people need to go. So, but generally speaking, across the board, I mean, classification. Those are the folks that are, are really looking at, at at people, making sure that you're not putting problems together that are, are going to cause issues for for you all. Correct. And, and classification is a. a 24 seven operation. Yeah. Correct. So that's just, I always like to talk about those things because those are the things that people don't even think right. about. Yeah. Like we're talking no, about no, jail, no but about nobody goes, Oh, well, well, how do we make sure that, you know, well, people what are happens, right they keep separates. Right. Um, if they're, you know, frequent flyers, they come in a lot of times, they'll, they'll have, you know, notes in their, their contact logs of, uh, you know, gang affiliation mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, and keep separates from certain individuals. So they try not to go, uh, you know, they hopefully don't try to put them in together uh, right. with other people. Mm -hmm. But um, so members of rival gangs would be kept separately, so yeah. less likely to cause yeah, yeah, cause yeah. problems. Yeah, exactly. Do people yeah. tell you what gangs they're in? How how do you know? Um, no, no. You you learn after a while. Okay. You learn after mm -hmm. a while. Uh, you learn through gang tattoos. Uh, they label the STGs, uh, strategic threat groups. Okay. You learn about. Um, there's books on it. You learn how to identify tattoos, prison tattoos, uh, jail tattoos, gang tattoos, affiliation tattoos, all that stuff. Okay. And I'm sure some slip through the cracks occasionally, but keeps it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because some people may not have been an issue, and then yeah. all of a sudden, right, you know. Right, right. But you probably spot that pretty quickly. You would notice whenever there's when there's a conflict or a fight about to start. Yeah, well, somebody come up and say something. Okay. Mm. You know, yeah, I, a lot, a lot of, a lot yeah, of I know so and so from yeah. the street. Um, okay. So somebody gets moved. Okay. I mean, we classify them and move them. So, you, I mean, that's a good inmate comes up to you and says that. I mean, do you generally, obviously, you, you have to because act. of the environment. Well, because of the environment you're in, also, you, you build a rapport with these folks, Correct. which you've said. So you just pretty much take what they say on uh, face value and. Well, you try to interview try both to, individuals. Okay. And, um, 
you you know they usually say yeah I, I can't be with him and you know we have a beef from the street we got this going on mm-hmm. uh, you know um, but you try interview both and right, make, make sure nobody's trying to take advantage of correct. the situation yeah. correct and you move one Right. Well, and also this um, classification process is like built to protect those that are like vulnerable as well. No, correct. Yes, yeah. you, you do have a. Uh, there is a vulnerable uh, inmate population. Mm-hmm. There is um, quite a few different categories that that they go through, um, and you try to you try to hit on one and try to find out. You know, is it all good to be okay to put this person yeah. in a general population situation where they're not going to be harassed or it's not going to be an issue? Because ultimately it, it comes down on the deputy to pick that out, yeah. to be able to identify that. And this then, guy gets picked on a lot. Or, correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people think like, you know, people get figured out in in jail, like because of whatever. Well, because they watch TV. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. They, they think they, that, and it's like, I no, that deputies make so sure saying, that everyone is safe, regardless <laughs> of why they're there. So you're saying that everything that happens on TV is not uh, it's not, not real? real. It's not even close. No. Orange is the New Black is I, not I, a documentary. I was oh, my that's entire terrible. Understanding <laughs> that's it, terrible. it actually or based six, on it. Sixty anyway. days in, <laughs> yeah, sixty days in. That's. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I, so, I can't watch it. So what is it? I mean, what is it about those shows? Is it that, I mean, is it similar perhaps to, to cops, you know, on the law enforcement <laughs> side? I mean, is it because they're they're just taking... Gore, know, the, gore cells, violent cells, right. all this other stuff. That's what keeps these people watching every week. I watched it once, mm-hmm. 60 days in. My wife and I were sitting on the couch, and I'm, I'm watching this go on, and I'm yelling at the TV. Mm. I was actually yelling at the TV, and I'm like, how could you be so stupid? Don't you see what's going on? Mm-hmm. And I turned, and I looked at my wife, and, and she said, we got to change the channel. <laughs> you're red in the face. You're starting to sweat. Uh, you got to change the channel. Uh, I just don't, I don't, I don't know how it goes on. Right. So, so what are some of the biggest myths about the jail that, that, that people tend to believe mm-hmm. that, that you could dispel? I really can't. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, does, does everybody make wine in their toilets? No, okay. absolutely <laughs> no. <clears throat> you might have somebody in the single cells or uh, two man cells, um, mm-hmm. it, other divisions. Maybe I, I've really never heard of it here. But they get checked like at least. Correct. Once we, a, we do zone inspections. It takes a lot of ferment. So correct. Um, I try to do a zone inspection before I even let anybody off lockdown. Okay. Um, before I let them start their day, yeah. I do a pretty thorough check. And you're always going to have somebody um, who comes up and says, hey, so-and-so's, um, you know, so-and-so's, you know, got buck or so-and-so's got this. And Okay. All right. It's got, it's got what? What was that word? A buck, which is um, homemade wine. Okay. Made out of fruit, bread, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, and you go and you, you just search. You do your own inspections. Uh-huh. That's the... The inmates know that you're who you are and what you're, uh, what you do every day, mm-hmm. um, your habits. Yeah. And they know, okay, Mr. LaCourt's going to look for this. He's going to look for that and everything else. And I, I've never found it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a zone inspection happens every shift. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. So you're, you're just shaking down their area. You're, to, yeah. You're what looking. Are the, what are the inmates allowed to have? Like, what is their area? What does that consist of? Um, in the inmate handbook, you're allowed a certain amount of books, certain amount of uh, periodicals, papers. Does the handbook count as one of the books? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what? They don't even give that out anymore. You oh. have to go on the kiosk and get that. Okay. And I mm. challenge them every time. Well, I can have this. Now. I said, no, go on the handbook, which is on the kiosk. Well, I don't know how to use the kiosk. Well, I guess you just lost your argument. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the easiest way to do it. Right. A lot of people, uh, they don't want to take the time to do it. Right. Um, if you have things that are unauthorized, I'm going to tell you, sir, you got two uniforms. Pick one that you like. The other one you don't like, throw in the, uh, the hamper. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got way too many sheets. You've got this. You've got that. Too many towels. Get rid of them. So they kind of get to manage their own... Their own area? Correct. Yeah, okay. yeah but they're, they know if I, at any time I can go over there and you know, roll everything up, look through something if there's any kind of uh, you know, suspicion or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't do that. Um, Unless there's cause for it, mm-hmm. um, a lot of inmates they keep their their uniforms underneath their bunks, uh, or whatever they have socks, everything else underneath their bunks. Not, not necessarily uniforms, but they keep it under their bunks. Um, 
And the, the last thing you want to do is go over there and mess with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you ask them, roll your mattress up, look under the mattress, everything else. Um, that that's a respect thing. Mm -hmm. And me showing you respect, sure. I'm going to get it back because there is a difference between an, um, I say this all the time. There's a difference between, I don't mean to go off track, mm -hmm. no. but there's a difference between a convict and an inmate. Mm -hmm. Convict is somebody who spent time state prison, federal prison. Um, they're the individuals that when you see them walking through the jail, they're going to walk with their hands behind their back, with their shirts tucked into their pants. And they're going to be a lot more respective toward you than an inmate is. And they meet as somebody who comes in, does their six months, leaves, comes back, does three months, comes in, does six months. They'll graduate to be a convict, mm. <laughs> but they're here just for that short period of time. And there's a big difference. And a lot of times the convicts will straighten out an inmate. Mm. Hmm. Be you know? Because they want order in their Tighten environment? Tighten up. Yeah, yeah, because they don't want any attention drawn to them. Mm. They might be here. Uh, for some VOP, you know, violation of uh, probation or something yeah. like that. They just want to do their 90 days, and they want to get out. Uh, they've done 10, 20, 30 years in state prison. They're not here to, to cause any issues. They're not here to bother anybody. They want to do their time. And the last thing they want is to be connected or hooked up with something else that's going something, on. Something, yeah, right. makes sense. Right, and, and it happens. Hmm. But, you know, obviously you show them respect that way, I mean, that goes back to the, you know, don't be dehumanizing. Correct. People are just, everybody, everybody's trying to do their time. Unfortunately, you kind of touched on it. Some people, well, that's why I mentioned also there's 33,000 bookings, not different people, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have some folks that come back. Um, what is that? <laughs> you strike me as somebody that, that, that may take it personally, you know, when you build a relationship with somebody while they're there and then you may see them again or, Correct. or you know, how to talk to me about that. Um, it bothers me mm. to release somebody to... I usually have a talk with them. Hey, listen, man, don't come here no more. I wish you the best of luck on the outside. Please don't come back anymore. And I've got kids from 18 years old to men 70 years old. Um, they come back. And they, some of them, they'll put their head down. And I'll walk up and I'll look up. I know their name. Hey, man, what are you doing here? I'm sorry, Mr. LaCourt. What are you sorry for? You know, how, how can you be, you know, how can you be a husband? How can you be a father when you're in here? And you try to put a little guilt on them, try to steer them straight, try to tell them to tighten up, and they, they got their head down. They won't talk. They won't look at you because they're, they're upset that last month they had a smile on their face walking out the door, and now they're back. Mm. It's recidivism. Yeah. It's hard. It, it, and it's whether it's drugs, um, we keep releasing people into society without tuning them up, without fixing something uh -huh. that's broken. And when they go back out there, there's no secondary, uh, there's no parent to watch them. Right. In jail. Sure. Saint, it's like I said, yeah, Catholic it's, school, it's like, like the army, like anything else. You're super being supervised, right. correct? And you're you're being mm -hmm. supervised. It's like the mental health, you know, crisis. It's the lack of, of case management in this correct. case. It may not be mental health, but it's it's something. Correct. So, we have a, a lot of people that will ask if if we're presenting, or, or for example, if the sheriff's speaking to a group or something. They, they we get a lot of questions, of course, about about the jail and and what kind of programs we have in the jail. But the challenge is, and what the breakdown is with our understanding is, we don't always have as much time. I, I, I mentioned right. that, you know, average stay last year, <laughs> length of stay was 33 days. So that's not a, a lot of time to, to turn, you know, to turn folks around. Um, but that, that's got to be tough to see because you, you work in a tough environment and you're obviously, you know, the right guy for the job. But then you have to see these folks again. And right. And it, it, it's not annoying because now I got to try harder. Now I got to try harder to get to you, to get in your head, to stop doing what you're doing. But once you leave, I, I, I'm not in your head anymore. Right. Yeah. They're not going to, yeah. you know, they may remember you, but they're not going to remember the, the speech that you gave them, you know, or the inspiration. Hey, listen, you know, you can do better when you get out there. You can do this. You can do that. There's always time to change. You don't have to keep doing this. But they keep going back to the same neighborhoods, the same, and it may take a, a week 
they may tell themselves, you know, I'm going to hit these aftercare programs, AA or uh, NA. They're going to try to hit these different programs, and they don't. Mm -hmm. And they don't make their court dates because they don't have a car. They don't have this. They don't have that. Mm -hmm. But you pee and they come back. There's always, you know, conversation about the lack of services and, and the people, you know, people just don't have the resources. And you look at things like not being able to go to, to meet your, you know, requirements of your release or, or what have you because you don't have a car. And, and these, these are really, they are systemic things. Correct. And that keeps people, you know, coming back. Now, one thing that, you know, and Sheriff Colterry says it a lot, particularly when he's talking about state prison, he says you basically have to beg your way into state prison because of, you know, the nature of, of some of the people that are there and, and different opportunities and, and so forth. But really, the county jail, I mean, for several years now, we've had the adult pre-arrest diversion program and, and a lot of other pre-trial type programs where, you know, if you're a first-time offender, low-level misdemeanor, nonviolent felony, there's programs for you to avoid having to spend time in the jail, which is, mm -hmm. I think, I personally think it's a big, a big part of why we don't see the numbers in the jail we saw six, seven, eight, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but you really, how do you feel? I mean, people, you have to be a repeat offender, really, to, to be these individuals that you see even the first time. Correct. To, to some degree. I don't know if I'd be able to separate myself from the frustration with people. Yeah. I just, I, I, but of course, going back to what I said a bit ago, like I did not, I grew up in a good environment. I do not have those influences. I, right. It's something you grow up in. I right. get that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I don't know if I could do it. The emotional burnout, I would think, would just be incredible. Like, how do you, how do you not let that weigh on you day after day? Uh, you got to have a weird sense of humor. Mm. I, yeah, I, yeah I, we can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I walk out and I, I, I brush. I get in a, mm. my. I got like an hour ride home. Mm. I got all the time in the world. Decompress on the, in to that get ride. everything out of my head yeah. and go home. Um, never take it home. Yeah, never take it. You, you're gonna. I tell recruits when they come in, you're gonna see things that you never possibly imagined you could see. Um, if you got to take a mental health day, take a mental health day. Let somebody know. Hey, listen, uh, you know, I need to take a day off. You learn to deal with it, uh, and you, you, the best thing is, is the, is the person sitting next to you in a read off. You sit down, you talk with them. Hey, you know, this is what happened. You you share a a bond with them, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, I know, I, I I they did that last time, and you know, okay, all right. But you, you, you try not to take that home. What other, any, any other myths or other, other things that I want to talk about? You mentioned having a messed the, up sense of humor. If you're on the fourth floor, you're not going to dig a hole out and leave. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. No prison break? No. no. There, I mean, <laughs> no. honestly, the... Unless you could the, go over the razor wire. Yeah. Like that. yeah. We, had, uh, we had an escape. Uh -huh. What was that? Two oh, yeah. years ago? Two years ago. Yeah. And yeah. That, barely, was, that was barely the... Barely an escape. Barely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. when you get caught immediately, like... Yeah. And yeah. people had eyes on you the whole time. Yeah. And, you know. and he got the, how many stitches from the razor wire that he went up? Yeah. yeah. He went over that razor wire, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he did. I think two two separate razor wires yeah. and broke his Ooh, ankle falling. That's desperation. And, yeah. Well... He was in for. He was he was about he, to be extradited for killing an killing infant. If I remember yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah, correct. He's that was his only shot. He's yeah. not going to see the light of day. I uh, mean, I've I've had uh, being on the fourth floor. I've had um, older inmates, um, dementia, sundowners. Mm -hmm. They'll make a break for the door when the door opens. Oh, okay. Custodial <laughs> guide them back to you know come on back in, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, they'll do it five, six, seven times a night. They'll walk to that door and they'll try to open a door. <laughs> so you have to go back to your bunk. Um, that's terrible, but... And you wonder, you know, he's got a bond of 500 bucks. Oh. I don't know if you're going to be able to keep this on. But you got a, you got a bond for 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Have your family come and get you. Yeah. Pay the bond. Yeah. We're not an old folks home. Right. Um, mm -hmm. well, it's it's probably... But then again, turn the page, it's probably easier for them to know where he is 24-7 and that he's getting his meds. He's he's right. he has a, a bunk. He's sheets, blanket. Can't mm -hmm. wander into danger. Taken care of. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. He has somebody watching them. Yeah. Well, one less thing that they have to worry about. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those things that you 
prepare for, to see and, and cope with. So you mentioned a uh, sense of humor, uh, which is, uh, seems to be a coping mechanism through most of anything that touches law enforcement. People don't believe it, but we are some of the biggest messed up group, group of people up in PR. We'd probably <laughs> shock you. We, we, uh, we, we, other units are, are around us, and they're like, oh, no, we have to watch our language. Oh, no, we can't make that joke around you PR yeah, people. Right. And, and it's just a fraction of what we do. Oh, yeah. right. I'm there. like, no, I talk just like you. Probably <laughs> so, worse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we would shock the, the, the SWAT team and K-9. Yeah, they, they, they have got, nothing on they us, got, really. Yeah, they got nothing. Yeah, I've, I've strung together quite a few, uh, like we mentioned before, sentence enhancers. I like it. I love and, that term, and sentence enhancers. It is, I use them to get your attention. Right. It, uh, I address every inmate as sir. I like that. Um, yeah. Once you don't, once you don't answer to sir, unfortunately, we have to use a sentence enhancer. It's like a, uh, a kid or a dog. Mm -hmm. What happens when a kid or a dog wanders into the street? Mm -hmm. You wind up screaming at him. They get hit by a car. Mm -hmm. Sir, I don't want you to get hit by a car. Come on over here. Right. And we need to talk. Mm -hmm. And use your sentence enhancers because it, it they gets look at attention. you. They, right. they look, and yeah. it gets their attention. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> so how, you know, how else do you, you know, I'm sure... Inmates, they're not. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. There's not always that respect there. Correct. Mm -hmm. They might take cheap shots at you or run their mouth. You know, how do you handle? They that? run their mouth all the time. Yeah. I've had guys go, "Hey, man, check my record. Check my record." I said, "Yeah, bro. It says uh, you can't be near schools. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be near schools at all." Oh. Right. Uh, quick wit. Mm -hmm. You try not to oh. emotionally, you know. Get on somebody, but you try somehow to, right. you know, come back. Make sure they know you're there. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And if they're the reason that the pod gets locked down, you make that known. Because yeah. it's the last time he'll make that. He'll make sure. That. Well, because then Absolutely. it's the, then everybody, all, all the eyes are on him. What's now, the lockdown mean? What do you mean the pod gets locked down? Um, it could be a physical altercation. It could be a medical issue. It could be something that um, I see her having a seizure. Okay. I got to lock that pod down. Because I can't be, uh, I can't uh, start medical attention on you yeah. if I've got 65 people walking around. Gotcha. Because now okay. I'm on the floor trying to put you in a recovery position, trying to get you to uh, a little bit of medical attention until okay. medical arrives. I can't have people walking behind me. So they just have, so they like go back right into to your their bunks. cells. Right to your bunks, okay. right to your cells, wherever you are. Gotcha. You're going to lock okay. down. Gotcha. Absolutely. Okay. And it's for my safety. Yeah. And, um, well, and the other person too, as in the situation of someone seizing, it's like, correct. Yeah, we correct. need all the space. Yeah. yeah. And plus we're going to have medical staff in there mm -hmm. and the biggest safety and the biggest uh, priority is um, medical has to feel safe Secure. while they're in that pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, during med pass, I don't allow uh, people to walk around. Um, come up, get your meds, go back to your bunk, go back to your areas, relax, no, let her do her job. Once we're done, then everybody. Once we're done. Do what you got to do, but that uh, civilians, you have to. They have to be able to walk in there and say, "Okay, look, I feel safe." Yeah, that would always. I mean, that's something that we're always hiring for various medical positions. Mm -hmm. Correct at the jail, yeah. and there's always the conversation with how we, you know, in PR can market it and 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 ensure that people understand this is a, a very safe environment. And absolutely, outside of putting, uh, you know, a, a medical staff member right. on camera explaining it. It's very right. difficult. And they yeah. are part of our family. Mm -hmm. And, and y y I would feel terrible, absolutely terrible, if something happened. Mm -hmm. um, I've had instances, uh, medical was in there, nurses were in there dispensing medication, and a fight breaks out. My first priority is to get that nurse mm -hmm. out of the unit. I'll lock her in the hallway in between two doors mm -hmm. and then deal with whatever's going on. Get out of control. Yeah, absolutely, because you, you can't have that person. Plus, you got a medical cart there with everything in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, all, yeah. those, all those yeah. drugs. All kinds of stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it, it, and that's, you know, that's, that's something that I think people like to hear is that you all recognize that it's a different environment for civilians, whether Correct. it's different mm -hmm. case workers. There's a lot of program services staff that are all over the jail all the time. And Correct. That's always been something that I've always, you know, been very clear to me is that your priority, everyone's priority out of the jail is making sure everybody stays safe. Of course, yeah. the inmates, but then mm -hmm. fellow staff members as well. Yeah. Do you feel like kind of back to, you know, if people are trying to take cheap shots and things like that, I don't know. I mean, we always talk about new generations of just people out on the street, you know, trying to talk to law enforcement in a way that 
everybody goes, oh my gosh, when I was a kid, if I would have said that to anyone, let alone a cop, like I would never do that. Do you, right. do you find that in the jail as well? Or, or is it because the people you're seeing? Rarely. Yeah, really. Rarely because um, if you take care of that situation right away, everybody else watches. They got nothing to do all day. When something goes down, all eyes are on that incident, that situation. Mm. Um, so they see if, how it goes. If, if you want to show you're behind, go ahead. Mm. But you're not going to do it in here. Mm. You know, we'll, we'll have you evaluated and you can go someplace else. You can, you know, go to another part of the jail. Um, medical is for medical. It's for inmates who, like I said earlier, um, They've had uh, a physical altercation. They need to be taken care of. You've got elderly inmates. You've got everything else going on there. This is not the place to um, bring your street behavior. Mm. Take your street behavior. When you leave, do what you got to do. And I suppose they may have already seen the consequences of their street behavior since they're in the jail. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. But some don't learn. Good help. Yeah. Some don't learn. Job security. Absolutely. You know, and we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. Job security. I tell these guys all the time, I want to pull up to that jail and I want to have somebody tell me, hey, the court, go home. All the lights are off. Nobody's here anymore. Go home. That'd make me happy. Yeah. I don't care. So what? Okay, cool. Goodbye. Turn around and leave. That probably never happened, but if it did, it would be beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it would. There's it no would. more inmates. No, nobody's coming to jail anymore. Oh, cool! I did my job. <laughs> Turn right around, go home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, yeah, I mean that would that would Perfect be ideal. Perfect world, yeah. That would be right. that would be ideal. So, what else? What are some other things that you think that the public? I mean, it may not be a myth. It may not be a good thing, bad thing. Doesn't matter what it is. But what are some things that you think people need to know uh, about anything about the jail? Whether it's the environment, the people that are working. You don't in get there. to keep your cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be a large uh, a big issue how, how do they live <laughs> I thought they're mandatory for survival these days well they usually allow them to get two or three telephone numbers out of that cell phone because oh, nobody so you remembers don't just get your one phone call oh no when you're yeah. when you're in the uh -huh. after booking you're allowed to sit make as many phone calls as you have oh. until you get a housing unit okay uh, after your housing assignment then you go upstairs then you got to buy a card uh -huh. um, phone card but, um, yeah, you don't get your cell phone. Okay. And you, you lose some of your rights. And that's where, that's where it becomes a behavioral issue with some people. Yeah. But you can look up the numbers. That's good because I have no numbers memorized. I, who does? <laughs> Nothing. I, I don't. Anymore? Remember. No. Oh, really? How many do you have? I've, how many? I've got a couple. I, like, specifically for when you're in jail so you know who to call? No, I know, I know who to call when I'm in jail. You're going to call the sheriff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> or Nicole. No, I wouldn't call him. No, no, I wouldn't call him. No. Uh, he, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I would call somebody that doesn't know I'm there, uh, yeah. probably, uh, because he absolutely would if any of us ended up there. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but I've, of course I remembered some. I remember some. Like okay. when I, I was a kid. Like well, of two course, or three. my parents have had the same cell phone number since cell phone numbers have been a thing. Yeah. So there's well, that. Well, I know my mom's, yeah, same same home, home number, landline, because it's been, it was my grandmother's. That number's existed since like 1974. So. Well, rotary I, phone. I know that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we're off the rails. What else? Besides, I mean, anything else? Any, is there stuff? I mean, there's got to be things. The food is see. not great. Well, I, I think everybody has. One of my that. biggest things is uh, I see pe repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. I see mm -hmm. the repeats come in. Um, and I, I usually look at them and say, hey, man, the record skipped. You're back. Mm. Playing the same song, aren't you? I said, well, look at it this way. When you go out to dinner, if you go to a, uh, a restaurant with your lady friend, whoever, and you're having something to eat and the chair's uncomfortable and the food's bad, you gonna go back to that restaurant? Hmm. Why do you keep coming back here? <laughs> and the food is the food is not. Yeah. How have you tasted the food? No, I would never. Okay. No. I was about to I, say, I can, what's no, the best no, meal? No, no, what's no. the worst yeah. meal? Like we no. need we need a Yelp review. I gotta no, tell you that <laughs> the cost for meals like a dollar forty. So if that tells you anything, yeah. I mean, um, it is. And, and the, the, the meal times. Oh my gosh! You eat breakfast like at three or four. Three o'clock. Yeah. Why? On a good day, three o'clock. Oh. Why is it? Why? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I have, but, and it's usually, if you're going to have an issue in, in the unit, that's yeah. when it's going to happen. 
Really? But when you get woke up, breakfast time, abs, sleep, breakfast, or meal, lunch, any or meal. meal time. Any meal? Do they have okay. coffee? They better at least get coffee. Right? <gasps> no, no, you have to oh, order off commissary. You can off commissary, oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's usually where, especially after a football game or basketball game or something, uh-huh. um, where you bet and you couldn't pay up, you're supposed to pay with your meal, which is you're not supposed to do, <laughs> but they do it. Oh, okay. Um, and that's usually when you have your physical altercations oh. and your your verbal altercations and your issues. Mm. So you tell them during the Super Bowl, gentlemen, if you can't bet, if you can't pay your bets, don't make your bets. They, they get to watch the Super Bowl? Sure, why not? Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, 11 o'clock, yeah. we usually, you know, turn the TV off, um, put them to bed, and, you know, I'm sure we all have kids. Yeah. And your kids... <laughs> I have a dog. Do you, do you sing the I have a dog, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a kid. Okay. Well, and... I reference it this way. Your, your kids usually take 30 to 45 minutes to wind down and fall asleep. Same thing with grown adults. Mm-hmm. You got to get your, you know, they'll, they'll make their coffee in the sink and go back and 45 minutes, it'll be dead silent, which is wonderful. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind if they talk or anything else. Go ahead, talk. If I, if I hear you at, at my desk, you're too loud. And that means you're keeping other people up. But, but yeah, 11 o'clock, night, night. I mean, technically, you know, three meals a day, average daily population, 2,800. That makes the Pinellas County Jail the biggest restaurant in the county. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, and I would assume that that would be the biggest expense for the jail. But the pharmaceuticals, I yeah, think, yeah, it's like, not. It's outweigh yeah. that a, a lot. A lot. There, there a are lot. Some, Can you imagine the amount of money? Wow. I got a stat book upstairs. I don't have to imagine it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's, a, it's an obscene amount of money, and it's something that... Again, people are, it's, it's, uh, there's a shock factor there. Correct. But again, it's like these people are in our care, custody, control. None of the staff at the jail right. brought them there. Right. They're not the reason they're there, but we, we still have to take care of them. Right. Um, Diabetics, everything yeah. else. Yeah. Incredible amount of money. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, even, and I, I don't remember the number, but again, the sheriff was recently speaking to a group and was talking about the pharmaceuticals and their, you know, if they have inmates that are HIV positive. Correct. Uh, that medication is astronomical. Oh yeah. Correct. I mean, it, it's it. It could. I, I think. I, I think it was somewhere around you know twenty percent of the entire pharmaceutical budget Holy could be hell. for Correct. a handful yeah. of. As you do to HIPAA, we don't know that. We right. don't know who is who. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, but the, the expense must be absolutely mm-hmm. incredible. That's that's a big chunk of it. I mean, most of the entire uh, DDC budget is just for medical. medical. Correct. Yeah. But it's. Again, it's it's an expensive uh, expensive business. So, over the years, your time in corrections, any standout stories, situations where? Because it sounds to me like, man, I, I kind of want to be in, in the court spot. I mean, he's kind of got it together. There's never chaos. There's, there's never drama. well, you get Good your conversation. You, you get your chaos. <laughs> um, you get to watch football games. Yeah. There's there's things. Uh, a lot of stuff. You know, you probably can't bring out. There's. Uh, you know, there's individuals who find way to shove objects in orifices, and uh, and you got to call medical. Um, uh, you have inmates that cover themselves in fecal matter, uh, and they're like, "Come on, come and get for, me!" Oh, okay, come and get me. Is Let's, that so? So you won't engage with them, so you won't fight with them because you don't want to touch them? Is that? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah they'll like do that, issues. and and that's when you just you know you call a corporal or a sergeant, and you say, "Hey, uh-huh. hey, listen, man, you might want to call the team." The because, team would be CRT? Absolutely. The We're not, corrections I'm not going in there. response team? Cor- absolutely. Corrections right. response team? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm not going in there. And then um, you brief them on the way in and say, hey, listen, he's, he's covered in crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, because they, they, won't flush, like, they won't flush the toilet, <laughs> and mm-hmm. they'll save their styrofoam cups, mm-hmm. and they'll keep the fecal matter, the urine, and the water all in one in. And they'll throw as you're walking by to do a safety and security check every 15 minutes, which is actually 13 minutes. Uh-huh. They're sliding it under the door, so you got to make sure because they'll, they'll wait. They know by the way you walk, by the way your keys jingle, by the way your footsteps are, who's uh-huh. coming down that hallway. Uh-huh. And if they don't like you, they'll wait for you. So a lot of times I'll go the opposite direction, or I'll walk past. And I'll look at them, and they got their hands behind their back. Oh, come mm-hmm. on, man. Hold on. I'll check it and then walk away. 
<laughs> no, I, that is the besides OC spray. That is the utmost nastiest substance. If you get it in your face, if you get it in your ears, if you get it, you have to ride home. And I don't care how many showers you took. I don't care how many pieces of gum you put in your mouth, how many times you wash your ears. Every time you turn your head quickly, you're going to smell <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm telling you. Did you just That's get to burn the uniform right at that point and just See, get reissued a new but one? But listen, every time I go home, I, I take off everything mm -hmm. uh -huh. in the garage and then go in. Uh -huh. So, you know, I, everything kind of stays out there. I'm not going to contaminate my house. Now, <laughs> on the, on the, out on the road, if you throw something at a deputy, that's a charge. So is it also a Correct. charge? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's assault. Assault on okay. law enforcement officer. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm just curious about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plus, it's nasty. Well, <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it, it angers you a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. But you know from now on, you'll never get nothing extra out of me. Nothing. Yeah. So sit there with poop on your hand for a while and I need soap. I need soap. I'll get you in a minute. Yeah. But you're going to have to, you're gonna oh, have to wait. You need Jesus. Yeah, you need more than soap. <laughs> well, yeah. What, what, I'm what? sorry, but... <laughs> Mm -mm. You got to remember, that's uh -huh. all done to gain some sort of reaction out of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you don't let that reaction happen. Show. Right. Because I will walk away and I will spend some quality time in the bathroom mm -hmm. talking to myself. Instead of letting that, letting my reaction be seen let by the individual. Let them know that that, that upset yeah. you. Yeah. And it, it's so, it happens so infrequently. But okay. it does happen. Mm -hmm. Um. What are some of the other tough parts about working at Suicide. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, to me, that, uh, that takes a lot out of you. Yeah. Um, because uh, we have to go in there. Um, there's been quite a few times where uh, healthcare, where you, um, during your checks, your routine checks, your uh, physical safety and security checks, uh, quite recently, we had an inmate that tied his uh, pants around his neck. Ten minutes previous, I was talking to him, and he was asking for a shower. I said, yeah, I'll get you. I'll put you on the list. It's going to be a couple minutes. And luckily, we were doing the zone inspections in that unit, and um, I was able to – I looked, and I looked again, and I'm like, oh, good God. And I was able to call my corporal, who was on the other side of the the unit, um, Race down, we were able to open a door uh, with another uh, deputy. Uh, the three of us went in there, we were able to supine him, put him down, um, and get the knot and everything off him. Um, it, I mean, it, it happens, you know, you and you go home and you don't, I don't know, it doesn't. It, it doesn't really, I don't have bad dreams, you know, like some people, oh, I can't, you know, no, it's part of the job. It's what you do. Thank God mm -hmm. he wasn't successful. Yeah. Thank God he wasn't able to complete the, the act. But uh, I mean, you have to be prepared. Your training kicks in instantaneously mm -hmm. as soon as you go in there. And when it's over, five minutes later, you're like, oh, wow, that just happened. You know, and it just happened. Is it, is it because what causes you that? You know, what makes you feel that way? Is it that just that they tried to do it? Is that it happened on your watch? Or there was no warning? Um, well, you know, like I said before, I always try to talk to the inmates. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you like me or not. I'm going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm trying to see what your mental state is that day. If uh, if I get a, you know, sentence enhancer or if I get, uh, you know, a hand gesture, okay, I got something. Um, and I'm not going to really bother to uh, engage in conversation. Um, does it bother me? Yeah, it, it bothers me. I hate to see anybody so broken that they have to, uh, you know, talk about, you know, things coming off the walls, hearing voices, all mm. this other stuff. Mm. Um, it, it, it loud, it, it allows you to see another part of society 
that n- most people do not see and most people won't understand because they don't have the ability to see what you're seeing all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be hard, you know, uh, and you feel bad. Um, you wish you could fix people. Mm-hmm. You know, I think everybody has that inside them. They want to, you see something wrong, you want to try to fix somebody. You see a homeless person, you want to lend them money. But you know, you lend them money, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Um, how did you get there? You know, why are you here? It, it, I, I don't know. I, I wish I had the answer for everything. I spent a lot of time thinking about why these things happen. The answers are never the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you can pose as many questions as you want to yourself uh, pertaining to, you know, why does this behavior happen? How do you correct that behavior? A- and it's a different answer every time. So, uh, how, how does working in the jail change how you look at things outside the jail? Like in society, yeah. like independent of, of that. I mean, yeah. you have to have, you see terrible things. I go into restaurants mm-hmm. and I look to see who's in the back, see who's washing dishes, see who's busting tables, see who the cook is. Because if they see me and I don't see them and see they don't like me, mm-hmm. mess up my food, you know, do mm. something. I've had uh, a couple instances where uh, I've been out with my family, my wife, and, um, if somebody says, hey, Mr. LaCourt, I know it's, in, mm-hmm. I know it's a past inmate. Mm-hmm. And I usually tell my wife, keep going to the car. Um, and I usually try to engage them. Hey, listen, I'm here with my family. What's up? You good? Everything good? Oh, hey, listen, I want to thank you for, you know, uh, your inspirational uh, mm-hmm. words. Okay, cool. You're doing good. I see you got a job. Mm-hmm. Great. I'm happy for you. Stay out of jail. Mm-hmm. I wish you the best of luck. And you try to um, be a little bit defensive, mm-hmm. but also accept the gratitude that they're trying to give you and wish them luck. Um, and it's, the biggest thing is to wish them luck. Hey, man, take it easy. Smile. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to smile, mm-hmm. you know, and then just walk away. What about, I, I guess, kind of getting into to some of the things that we do. I mean, you see the bad side. You see the worst of everybody. Mm-hmm. So how do you balance you know when you're when you're outside the jail i mean are, are you are, you have a different perspective on just about everything and are you you know you you kind of keep it close you know what you deal with at work but do you also keep your thoughts and 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 feelings on, on different things close as well because of what you experience in the jail or with my family yeah or just in with general with friends outside. yeah um again I, I i get the same thing what's it like you know, what's it like? And you try to give them a, a glossed over, you know, reply. Um, I don't know. I do my own thing. Once I leave, I'm not worried about it. Done. No, I don't, I don't worry about it. And I, I usually just go home and turn the TV on and go to sleep. Mm-hmm. I, I try not to let it, because if you do, it's like anything else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll worry is what, you know, makes yeah. you grow old. It does this. It, it, it weighs on you. I lose your hair. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Are you, are you more? Are you more cynical? Or are you more like mistrustful yeah. of society? Or more um, you feel like, yeah. yeah. You know, like if you see someone that's having, like you spoke about, um, like someone who's homeless, right? Like, how, what is your general? Like, some people are like I, they I, need to pick themselves up. You know, that kind of thing. Well, like what's does that like shape your view? We have um, in our society, we have a, uh, and, and this is this was really bothers me. We have a tremendous amount of. Uh, military veterans. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot that come into the jail. Mm-hmm. Uh, we even have a special pod for them mm-hmm. in Central mm-hmm. Division. Um, these individuals fought. These individuals came back. Uh, they're missing body parts. Their minds are gone. And um, we have to rely on outside agencies except from our government to help them get through a day. Uh, I, I think I read they, they say uh, it was a commercial, 22 vets mm-hmm. a day, a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. kill themselves. Yeah. 22, 22 no way. a mm-hmm. day kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's terrible. It's 22 people mm-hmm. a day. Why? You know? I don't know. It, 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 uh, it, so basically, I mean, if veterans are falling through the cracks. You know, correct, yeah. correct. And, and the home, and, and a lot are homeless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 I don't, I'm not a, hey, you're homeless, you need something to eat. I'll get you something to eat. 
I'll be back in five minutes. Mm. I ain't going to give you money. Mm. I do that too. Do you get money? No. No. Oh, okay. Like I very much was like, I'll get you a meal. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd rather see you eat than, than, than drink or, you know, God forbid, go buy fentanyl or go buy something. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but no. food? I got you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Here, bottles of water. I got a bottle. I got a, usually have a case of water in my, my car anyway. Here, here you go. There's a couple of bottles of water. Mm-hmm. Did you ever work on the veterans pot at all? Um, once. Okay. Once. Um, probably the cleanest pot down there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they take care of that pot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well behaved. I never had an issue in there. And I was only in there for a couple hours. Mm-hmm. They do. They, I, I believe, they do a a Veterans Day ceremony in there. They they really you know do it up and and find that's another way to connect is you know kind of find that pride that Correct. people have, yeah. uh, and that's that's important. But that's you know I appreciate you sharing that. I know that's that's obviously something that that's very personal to you. But it is. I mean, if if we're letting veterans and people that serve the country fall through the cracks on Correct. things. What else are we missing? Thousands of them. Yeah. Thousands of them. Yeah. And they're, they're coming back and they're broken. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm. it, it just, it's our, it's, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it irritates me to a point, you know? And I think obviously you have a very valuable perspective on it. Not everybody has it. And I, I think that's, there, there's a lot of things, well, there's some things that will never change no matter what, but there are some things that I feel like if more people saw it or more people experienced it, that's, Correct. that's you're on the pathway to, yeah. to making something better. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's a lot of heavy stuff. Let's start heading the other direction here. Uh, what are some of the things you enjoy most about mm-hmm. working in the jail? The people I work with, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, I work with uh, some fantastic people from leadership on down. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's why I stay there. I stay there because I've grown to to love these people, um, to work with them side by side. You don't look at it as you're going into battle every day. You look at it as I'm going to work with 30 of my friends, mm-hmm. yeah. 35 of my friends, 40 of my friends. I'm going to work with my friends. Um, you could look at each and every person and say, hey, how you doing? You know something about them. The it's a tight group, and like I said earlier, the people that are there, they want to be there. They chose to be there because of the leadership and the ability uh, to their skills are 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 best done uh, in healthcare. Tremendous people. And um, you know, we featured you for Meet the Stars and mm-hmm. social media. Um, are on our pages. And that was for almost every single person that worked at the jail. Um, when I asked them what their favorite part of their job was, that was like the number one thing. It came up immediately. Correct. So like the jail as a whole, like there's, it seems like there's this real sense of family and community. The Correct. camaraderie um, that it, there just always amazes yes. me. Be- yeah. Before I had been to the, in the jail a lot, uh, I thought it would be a very depressing place to work. But but I go in there, everybody that works there is so happy to see yeah. each other. They're, they're yeah. hugging each other. They're talking to each yeah. other. It's, it's just a very happy environment full of, full of camaraderie. I, I'm so impressed by that every time I'm there. These, uh, a lot of people that you work with, um, there'll be situations where you're in a unit and something might be happening. And all you got to do is look at them. And they know that, you know, something's... Okay, LaCourt's going to do this, or so and so is going to do this. Yeah. Um, this is not a minimum wage job. This is not something where you come in, you do your eight, your 12, you walk out the door. You, every day that you go in there, you leave a piece of you there. And then the next day, you do the same thing because of the people that you work with. Y- you're going to have that, that bond with that person at all times. You're going to be able to, um, and like we said before, that sense of humor. You could talk about things with a guy sitting next to you that you can't talk about <laughs> with somebody on the outside because sure. they're not going to get it. They're mm-hmm. just not going to, you know. Hmm. Well, that's good. I mean, like Laura said, I mean, it is very clear. The camaraderie there is, mm-hmm. is off the charts, oh, yeah. and, and you, you almost have to have it. I mean, that's how it is in, in some of the other areas of the agency that can be challenging, uh, different investigative areas where they're seeing heavy things and just the environment, right. and, that's, yeah. and that's great. So in your, in your spare time, when you're off work, what do you like to do? Um, 
You know what? And we, we're going to talk about your jet skiing. Before okay. We, let you go, yeah. so. <laughs> we live where people vacation. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think about that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We live where people come to to uh, have a vacation. They go. Disney World is what ninety miles away. Mm-hmm. We have the Gulf of Mexico. We have some semi decent restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but I was going to jail. I mean, but we <laughs> have, <laughs> there you go. Uh, but we have the ability to. Go to the beach almost every day. We have beautiful weather, Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't snow. Mm -hmm. Um, I like um, my wife and I are big beach people. Mm -hmm. We uh, we were married on the beach, Coquina Beach. Mm. Um, Mm. We we really really like our personal time out on the beach, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter where we go, as long as it's got sand, Mm -hmm. Um, snorkel, skis, Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of stuff. Best beach around here. What is it? San, for me, mm-hmm. San Key. I like San Key and I like Coquina. Mm. And why is that? Just because there's Coquina is very. Um, almost every time we're there, the manatees come in, mm. and my oh, yeah. my wife's a nut about those manatees. I love them. She runs out there and she gets so excited. Shell Key. I don't know if you've ever been there. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Um, yeah, we just we try to get out and do things. You guys ever go to the Wikiwachi? Like the river? No, but oh, you need to. Get I keep getting pounded about that. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful, yeah. and then like seeing the manatees in that yes. environment. Yeah. Water's a little cold, but yeah. it is. But it's so clear. So I mean, beautiful. if you go when it's cool out, the water is warm. Yeah. It stays like seventy-two year 72, yeah. round. Seventy, yeah. 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 yeah, it's beautiful. We'll add it to the list then. We're gonna have to. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, she's gonna see this, and now we're gonna have to go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, there it is. Bam. It was worth it because mm-hmm. we got them yeah. got a brownie go. points with a wife. That's yeah, here. You go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're not going to let this go. So you are the 2022 Detention Deputy of the Year for Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Also, uh, FSA's Detention Deputy of the Year for Correct. Sheriff's Association. Yeah. Uh, for a particular incident. And, and what's, what's interesting about it is it, it wasn't even an incident at a jail. Yeah. Uh, but that just goes to show that. You know, once a deputy, always a deputy. This is the career, you know, you choose this career to help people make them better. Right. So why don't you tell us about uh, the incident that got you these accolades? Um, that day, my wife and I, um, we never jet ski on the weekend. Hmm. Too many knuckleheads, too many people. Um, they don't follow the rules, whatever. Um, we left uh, Dunedin Causeway and um, went the, uh, through the intercoastal hmm. heading north. And um, the water was really starting to get, it it was like riding a dirt bike. Mm. And it was just bouncing all around. And um, we thought about turning back. And she's, no, I need a beach day. I need a beach day. I don't know if you've ever been there. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, we proceeded to go to the north end of the, the island, anchored. Put a couple chairs down and a bottle of water. And uh, there was a family off to our left. And they were uh, they were enjoying the, you know, the beach, everything else. And and the mother had walked down the beach uh, with three kids, um, an older boy and two younger boys. And about five minutes later, they came running down the beach that the kids had got sucked out into the Gulf. That day, uh, the tide usually goes from the west to east and hits the uh, western end of the island. It was going south to north, and it was pulling out into the Gulf, and it was causing like a washbowl effect. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can hear the panic in her voice, and as a parent, you know... That's not good. Um, so my wife <laughs> grabbed my life vest, threw it at me, and said, go out there, go get those kids. Um, and I did. I hit the, the wash bowl, went past that. And I, there was a large seaweed uh, drifting pile, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. sarcasm. Um, and I thought it was them because I'm standing up and I'm trying to figure out where the kids are. Because they went underwater. Mm-hmm. Did you have eyes on them at all up to this point? No. Okay. I was I was actually looking at the mother quite a few times to get her, you know, and she's pointing, but she's, she was too busy with her hands over right. her, her face. 
And it's super, super rough now. Like how, how Correct. High, Three to how four seas. feet were the waves. Wow. I've oh, wow. never seen the waves that big ever. That's pretty intense. Um, and I was having an issue fighting, and I thought it was them, but they were probably 100 yards to the right. That's how fast they got sucked down into the Gulf. Yeah. So as I turn around, I saw him real quick. The older boy hit the younger boy on top of his chest. Mm. And he was trying to keep him from going back under. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the older boy had a set of goggles on. And I was able to pull up on him. I didn't want to pull up too fast because I was afraid I was going to run him over. Uh -huh. Right. So I pulled up and I just was able to drift towards him. And I grabbed the young boy and I threw him on me. But he had... Um, inhaled quite a bit of uh, salt water. Mm -hmm. um, he vomited salt water, uh, his contents of his stomach and everything else. And I was able to put him on the back behind me and I told him to hold on. And I went to reach for his brother and I couldn't find his brother. His brother was gone. Oh. Mm -hmm. His brother went under and I couldn't find him. So I started doing figure eights in the general area. Well, he had gone 50 yards by then. And... I saw him, I was standing up, and I turned and I looked, and I saw him on my right eye. I got over there, and I saw him underneath uh, a couple feet down, and I could see with the glasses on, he was he had rapid eye movement going on. Uh, his mouth was open, he was inhaling salt water. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how, but I reached down, and I was able to grab his arm and pull him up. And I continued to pull him up, and I pulled him over my lap, and he the same thing as his brother. He spelled the contents of his stomach. Um, told him to hold on, put him behind me, and his brother held on to him. And um, by the grace of God, they were breathing because they're screaming and crying. Mm -hmm. So I knew that they were breathing. Um, and I was able to take them back to the beach to their mother. Um, it would have killed me. I, I say this a thousand times. It, it would have killed me not to get that second boy. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, How old were they? I think 10 and 7. Jeez. Uh, 11 and 7. Um, I see that little boy. You know, sometimes I'll, 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 see, I'll see his face with the goggles on. Oh. And I think to myself, uh, yeah, I, and I think to myself, how how would I be able to go back there and say, here, here here's only one child. Mm -hmm. I can't get the other kid. How do you, you know, and you think about that. And it, you know, it, it it's woken me up a couple times at night. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm grateful to God. Yeah. I'm grateful that we were able to be there that day uh, and help this woman out. Um, and I'm glad both those kids Half an hour later, they were back in the water. <laughs> not, not in the Gulf. They were on the other side. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I'm, I'm, you know, I had, I had to take like 10, 15 minutes. I had to go for a walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would too. And I, I, I was like, man, I could have died. <laughs> I'd hate to say that, but that's a thought that went through my mind. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, you know, I, I could have died. And her and my wife had started talking. Um, and uh, I think they said something and something to my wife about, uh, you know, what your husband do for a living. And she said, well, I'm going to call the sheriff and let him know that, you know, you're a hero. You did this, you did that. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. No, no. Yeah. Don't do that. It, it, it's, you got your kids back, mm -hmm. you know. Um, beautiful people. Um, the, the kids, uh, they were fantastic. You know, like I said, resilient. They bounce right back. Mm -hmm. Right back in the water right after drowning. Right. right. Half an hour, half an hour later, they were out there. Wow. They were like right out. Happened. Nope. No. Nope. That's kids for you. Yeah. And they, they bounced back. And, um, you know, thank God uh, everything turned out right. Yeah. And you were there. Yeah. 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 Because if you wouldn't have been there. Yeah. Well, that doesn't I, th work. I think we stayed for like another half an hour and then we just said, let's call it a day. And <laughs> yeah. little, enough excitement. Yeah. We'll go home and have a cocktail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Got, you earned it. Yeah, she, got her, earned it. Yeah. she got her beach day. But. Yeah. <laughs> but it, um, you know, we made new friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, um, Thank God. Uh, no. Thank God it, it happened the way it did. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I talk about it real quick. Mm. It seemed like it took an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and um, I never thought, as a father, I never I never thought twice. Mm. I mean, you just, yeah. you know. You got to do it, yeah. 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 
Uh, and it, it was incredible. So we've, we've been giving you quite a bit of attention. You got the FSA award. We did a video for everything and, Correct. and, and whatnot, but it, it is incredible. It's not, mm-hmm. yeah. you have to have a special mindset to do what, what whether you're on the correction side, law enforcement side, to do what you do, you have to have an important mindset. It's not a big deal to you, right? But I, if if I'm out, if anybody other than you is out there, that doesn't that doesn't well, except maybe like a rescue swimmer or a yeah. marine unit. But I mean, it doesn't go that way. Yeah. Like, how do you? I was supposed to be there. My wife and I right. were supposed to be there. Yeah. Because all intentions were to turn around and go back mm-hmm. because of the waves were so bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People don't get to it. It's a once in a lifetime thing to be able to be part so. of something like that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, your bad luck should probably stay yeah. off the water. Yeah. But uh, we appreciate you for sharing that. And Absolutely. of course, for, yeah. for what you did, because it, it not only got you the attention you deserve, but of course, reminded everybody that our deputies, whether they're at work or off work or whatever, they're all Correct. ready to, yeah. to step up and, and do what needs to be done to take care of business. How did your coworkers react when you came in the next day or after the weekend? Well, Nobody knew about it. Um, my lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Francesovic, uh, came up and talked to me about it. And uh, right after that, I got a couple emails, uh, you know, Bay News 9, this channel, that channel. They all want to do interviews. And and it just snowballed from there. But, yeah. yeah. It, was, uh, it, was, it was a little bit too much attention. It's like setting yourself mm-hmm. on fire and running down the street. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when um, it was going on and PIO mentioned that you were talking with, uh, you know, news stations and stuff. I was like, what? What? I was like, we have to put this out there. Right. Like, it's people our, yeah. need to see. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and it, yeah. It, you know what it was? It shows us in a different light. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It shows us in a positive manner. Mm-hmm. And we um, need that. Law enforcement needs absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Um, each and every time we do something good, it should be, um, you know, sent out there. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So different situation working at the jail versus some of the law enforcement folks we've had on. I mean, Detective Chalmers, we could you say, hey, what do you want the public to know about cold cases? Or if you know something for Sergeant Killian, we could say, well... You know, what do you want the public to know if they hear the helicopter or see a dog working? You know, what do they need to do? Deputy LaCourt, what do you want the public to know uh, when it relates to the jail? Besides, you don't, don't want to there? see them. Don't yeah. go there. Unless, unless, you're, on a, unless yeah. you're on a tour I don't with want to know your name. Academy or something. <laughs> um, what do you want the public to know? This is not a job. This is a career. This is a career choice. Um, this is something that you have to want to do, and then you grow to love um, we're human beings like everybody else. Um, we act the same or react the same way to s- situations that, you know, somebody might and somebody might not, mm-hmm. but this is our career choice. Um, we're not the bad guy, you know, we're, we're, we're here for a reason and, and we're all trying to just get through this day. Right. So what about someone that is perhaps considering a career in corrections? What about them? What do you have to say to them? Do it. Absolutely. The best job you will ever have. It it beats Walmart by a mile. <laughs> it, it you know it, it it's something that we need to promote our profession more. Um, I don't know if this is going to go through, but we have graduating classes of four and five people. It's not only our agency; it's sure. every it's across agency yeah. across this mm-hmm. country. Mm-hmm. Um, they're even sending out headhunters that are getting a hold of deputies from New York, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. this, that. Mm-hmm. Hey, how would you like to work someplace where the sun shines 95% of the day? Mm-hmm. Um, we have to continue to get the best and the brightest. Mm-hmm. We have to find ways to get people to come into this profession at 100% and keep getting these people. Um, there should be no reason we can't graduate 20, 30 people at a time. Mm-hmm. There has to be. Sounds good. So you're, 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 you're an FTO. You're somebody yes, who trains the, the, new, yes. the new recruits there. So, so what, are you, what are you looking for? Like, Describe the ideal candidate. 
The ideal candidate is a pre-certified individual who comes in there and knows the job. You don't have to <laughs> walk <laughs> oh, them around, and that's what an ideal candidate. A less is. than ideal candidate for someone who doesn't have experience. Then, what like personality traits? What what you're looking for? The ability who, who, to who would do a good communication. Job. Yeah. Uh, somebody who knows how to communicate, somebody who's task-minded, somebody who knows uh, you're going to do this job the same way every day. You have to be the same exact person you are every day. You can't change. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be involved in your job. You have to care for people. Yeah. That's a big thing. You you just can't go in there and and dictate, 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 do this, do that. No is not always uh, the same corrections. The first answer when somebody asks you a question is, is no. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not true. Um, maybe, possibly, you know, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Um, but the first answer is not always no. I'm a firm believer in that. Do you, do you think that, so not talking about pre-certified folks with experience, but in general, because we, of course, hire detention deputy recruits, do you think that those people exist that you're describing in the generation of folks that could be coming up as a recruit? Mm. Yes and no. Mm. I don't blame them. I blame their upbringing. I, I spend five minutes with your child so I don't have to spend 12 hours with your child. Mm. Take that time. You yourself, put the phone down. The phones were never that big of a thing. I, we didn't have those. I'm 54 years old. We, we didn't have that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Mm -hmm. But I see people today, they're, their kids are playing in the park or they're playing on, you know, the monkey bars or whatever, and the, the mother's doing that. What are you, how come you're not involved in what your kids are doing? You know? How come you're not involved in your kids' homework, your, you know, the, the schools, everything else? I've seen parents taught Little League Baseball where parents pull up, they let the kids out, and they stay inside the vehicle. Get involved with your children. Mm -hmm. Make your children know that they're, you know, they're, they're not being dropped off. I, I, I don't know. I, um, I was raised different, thank God. Mm -hmm. But I, how do you not get involved with your children? Right. That would... that, that's the biggest thing. Because what do you have after that? They're like ghost kids. They walk around. And you ever, if you look at some of the kids nowadays... They won't have this eye-to-eye -eye contact with you when they speak to you. Mm -hmm. They'll look down. Look down, yeah. They'll look down. And if you look down and you're walking, you're going through life, where are you going? You don't even know where you're going because you're looking down. Mm -hmm. Or you're on your phone. Mm -hmm. Call these kids sometimes. No, don't call me. Text me. What do you mean text you? No, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. And it's, it's such a different... Yeah, different area with, with kids to, mm -hmm. you know, and I say kids, it could be 20, 25 years right, old, right? but be somebody, develop a personality. Some of these kids come in, they don't even have a personality. Yeah. They come in and they're, they're lost and then, and they're afraid to get involved. You got guys six foot two, six foot three, you're afraid to get, you might have to get physical, sir. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you got to put hands on somebody. Yeah. It's time, mm -hmm. you know, and don't shy away from it because, you know, that's, it's going to be noticed. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, y'all heard from the 2022 PCSO <laughs> Detention Deputy of the Year, Anthony LaCourt. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming in and chatting with us. We Thank really appreciate much. it. You know, we, we, we've been talking for a few episodes now, and there's door kicking stories and all that stuff, but this is the real, the good stuff, the, the, the good conversation, important conversation that gives everybody the insight because you said it, hit the nail on the head. You know, we need to humanize law enforcement and corrections, everybody that's part of it. And, Absolutely. And that's what we set out to do uh, with this podcast is just talk and, and kind of get those nuggets right. and insight for everybody. So right. we appreciate you uh, right. coming on. And the only time us. the public gets to interact with me right. is if they come to jail. Right. Yeah. Or come with the Citizens Academy. Absolutely. We'll have to make sure we come, we, we go see him next time. We'll Absolutely. Definitely. Come on up. I'll, I'll show you how to run a pod. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So, uh, as always, uh, we appreciate everybody taking the time to listen. And if you have feedback for us, you can email us at let's56 at pcsonet.com. That's L E T S 5 6 at pcsonet.com. That was exceptional. There you go. Ashley, any Not parting? Not rehearsed at all. No, no, no. She's never done that before. That was her no. first time. Never. <laughs> Ashley, any parting words? Follow us on social, on yes. which platforms? We have YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, 
next door if you use that. Twitter. That was that was a test. You did a great job. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> I only interact with them every day. Yeah. Yeah, only every day. Yeah. Only. Yeah. She, well, she, thank she you. is our social media. She is. So, she, she I am it. the social media. The social, social media. media. <laughs> Ashley Cooley, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Deputy LaCour, thank for coming you. on. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Great talking with you. Thank Thanks. you. And we'll do it again soon. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. We'll do it.